What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistigraph Series. I want to continue to examine 100 years of world championship fights. October 1st, 1975. Promoter was Don King. The bout was at the Coliseum of Antia. Bill Gay, Cubano, Quezon City, Philippines Islands was known as the Thriller and Manila. Be the third meeting between these two men. Muhammad Ali was awarded the victory and remains the WBA WBC in his fourth title defense as champion. When a former champion smoking Joe Frazier was prevented from coming out of his corner and it started a 14th round by his chief second, Eddie Futch and his assistant former ranked number one middleweight contender. Georgie Benton. Referee was Carlos Badia. Muhammad Ali was 33 years old. He stood 6 foot 3 inches, he weighed 212 pounds, and had a record walking into this bout of 48 wins, 2 losses, and 34 knockouts. Now, Joe Frazier was 31 years old. He stood 5 foot 11 and a half inches, weighed 209 pounds, and had a record of 32 wins, 2 losses, and 27 knockouts. Now, as for Muhammad Ali, he was promised by Don King to earn $9 million. But he would wind up getting $4.5 million and 43% of the game. Joe Frazier was promised $5 million. But he would earn $2 million and 22% of the game. On March 8, 1971, Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier he would fight for the WBC, WBA, Ring Magazine, and New York SAC heavyweight titles. Joe Frazier was the unified champion. Muhammad Ali was the people's champion. The belts were stripped from him. More so the WBA. Because Ali would change his name and his faith. And he would refuse induction of the Vietnam War. And at this point in time, Joe Frazier was compliant as a citizen of the United States. But see, he didn't have to go to the war because he had a son named Marvis Frazier. And because he didn't side with Muhammad Ali, he was known to Ali, to Ali's fans, as an Uncle Tom. And Joe Frazier said, I don't peep through no windows. <laughs> that would be called a peeping Tom. But when Joe Frazier found out what it really meant, He was hurt because it was said that he gave some love to Ali, put money in his front pocket when Ali was in need. And in Joe Frazier's point of view, to have a brother turn on you, either in promotion of a fight, or in how he really felt about him. Was the worst thing you can do to someone. January 28th, 1974, Muhammad Ali would meet Joe Frazier for the NABF heavyweight championship belt. It was in defense of Ali's title. But here, October 1st, 1975, would be known as the Thriller and Manila. And Muhammad Ali would walk around with a gorilla in his front pocket. And he would use that gorilla's head as a speed bag. And what was so upsetting to Joe Frazier, because Joe Frazier was known as the gorilla, 
in the eyes of Muhammad Ali. You see, Ali opponents all had names. Floyd Patterson was known as the rabbit. And Ali would walk into Floyd Patterson's training camp with carrots and lettuce and told him, you are the rabbit. George Shavala was known as the washerwoman. George Foreman was known as the mummy. Let's take a look at the fight between Smoke and Joe Fazer and Muhammad Ali and Manila on the night of October 1st, 1975. I tell you something, man. Muhammad Ali was something else. He would get a hold of Ernie Terrell. In the middle of fighting, he would ask him, What's my name? What's my name? <laughs> I can't make this stuff up, man. But before that, he would taunt Floyd Patterson. Yeah, innocent Floyd Patterson. He would say, you are the rabbit. But then he would get in there with Smoke and Joe Frazier. Things began to change. We could see Joe Frazier was cut from a different cloth. He didn't go in there and play games with Joe Frazier. And Ali was off for three years. And he didn't like the fact that Joe Frazier didn't fight in a tournament. For his WBA belt that they stripped from him. You see, Joe Frazier went out of the tournament because he, think, he figured it was ranked number one already. Why should he have to go down to rank number five? So he faced Buster Mathis Sr. He would win New York Sack, then be awarded the WBC Heavyweight Championship belt. And this fight took place March 8, 1971, at the Mecca. Madison Square Garden. Oh, what a hell of a fight that was. 15 rounds of brutality. Ali would come out on the short end of the stick on that one. But he would be the second man in heavyweight history to once again earn the heavyweight championship belt when he would take out Big George Foreman. Zaire Africa, as he says, where the Labuma boys are. <laughs> he would stop him in eight rounds, man. And George Foreman was known as the mummy. Yeah, yeah. And here we go to the Philippine Islands. This was perhaps the most brutal heavyweight championship bout in all of boxing. And Ali would tell Joe Frazier, they told me you were washed up, Joe. And Joe said they lied. They lied. It was all fun and games. And Ali would walk around the gymnasium. in a press conference with a little gorilla in his top pocket. But you see, Stanley Crouch, famous newspaper editor, once said about a fight that took place in 1910, Reno, Nevada, with Jack Johnson, Jim Jeffries, 
He said the promoter always make money. Because when it comes to the game of boxing, when a man is paid to break his leg off in your rear end, <laughs> people would pay for that. But to disrespect another man, to earn a dollar, was taking it to a whole new level. Joe Frazier made sure that he was around as far as he could, made sure Ali would pay. Let's take a look at the ballot. 1975, Philippine Islands, between Smoke and Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali. five rounds and uh that round proved it. he's going at joe he's not sitting back and playing around not at all tell him i tell him i don't have a monitor will you Oh! 
woman last year. On Foreman's punches, there were more roundhouse punches. Joe's trying to take his spots. He's trying to go between the hands. He's trying to go behind the elbows, between the kidneys, and this is bound to have a telling effect later on in the round if the fight goes that far. This um, is when uh, Ali puts on the rally towards the end of the round. That's right. Tracer cannot match hand speed with Ali, so his best bet is to try to stay inside, and Ali starts throwing to either tie him up or push him toward the ropes. I noticed that Ali missed a lot in that round as though he were over anxious. Uh, to a certain extent, he had played so much in the round, and toward the latter part of the round, always in the last 15 or 10 seconds, he tried to throw a big flurry. on condition. End up the way a lot of people probably suspect. There's the corner of Ali as he leads the cheering. Ali leading his own cheering. Corner of Joe Frazier, Eddie Fudge, Milk Bailey, and George Benton. Round five coming up.
has a big left hook. That was early in the round. Ali dancing for the first time. Let's see Joe Frazier here now. And one of his uh, big rallies of the round. I still feel that Ollie's got control. Ollie alternately dancing, fighting flat-footed, and going to the rope. Let's go 
it down the road. Muhammad Ali was from Louisville, Kentucky. He would have his bike stolen at the age of 12. From that point on, he would win all the amateur championships. He would predict the rounds as a professional. Until those round predictions stopped with New York's Doug Jones. He was dropped by Sonny Banks. He dropped by Henry Cooper. But he'd be in some wars. He'd be a two-time heavyweight champion, eventually three-time heavyweight champion. Smoking Joe Frazier from Buford, South Carolina. He was known as Big Blue. Big Blue. When he was in Buford, he would move to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And he would be a terror in the ring. In his 11th pro fight, he would get a scare of his life. And he'd be dropped twice by Ringo. Oscar Bonavane, New York's Madison Square Garden. One more knockdown, and he wouldn't have that fight in 71. Muhammad Ali. Joe Frazier. Would go through the heavyweight ranks like a locomotive. Would stop Eddie Machen. And he would stop Jimmy Ellis, one of the most bodacious love hooks in all of boxing. He be stopped himself in two rounds. Cased in Jamaica by Big George Foreman. Here we are. Drill in the middle of Muhammad Ali. What a war Joe Fisher would have with Jerry Quart. But these three men, these two men I should say here. Ali and Fraser will be in three wars. Their name will be forever linked. Ali Fraser, Fraser Ali. As you can see, Fraser took a back step from a beautiful straight right hand by Muhammad Ali. These men battered each other. Ali was about to quit in the fight in the corner. He told Dr. Fetty Pacheco. And Angel Dundee, he couldn't breathe would be the closest thing to hell. Dr. Freddy Pacheco was about to recommend that the fight be stopped. And Eddie Futch would be the new trainer in Fraser's corner after Yank Durham would die. Would recommend that Joe Fraser fight be stopped. You see, Joe Fraser had a hematoma above his left eye. Many didn't know that Joe Fraser was blind. Majority of his career, he couldn't see. Came out of the Tokyo Olympic Games in 1964 with a busted thumb and partially blind at that point. What a fight between these two men. I'm Scrap of Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Series. All great fights and all great fighters. Would never be forgotten on my channel. 100 years of world championship fights. 1975.
Grilla and Manila. Next fight we will cover. Big George Foreman, Ron Lyle. And what a fight that was. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Until next time. Peace.